Regular meeting number 55 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening we are Please, council is pleased to be joined by Pastor Amy Aspey, Senior Pastor of the Short North Church. Pastor, welcome to council. Thank you for uh, praying with us this evening. Thank you. Let us pray. God who lives in community and calls us to do the same, we ask that you be present in this community tonight. May we seek to understand one another and the needs of those we serve. May we, like you, be slow to anger and abound in steadfast love. May we be quicker to listen than we are to speak, and grant us compassion to hear what is spoken beyond words, in silence, in suffering, in pain, and in joy. Giver of wisdom, grant us discerning minds for the decisions before us. Expand our capacity to see possibilities over problems, Keep us mindful of the most vulnerable in our midst and help us to discover solutions that do not compound suffering. Guide us in the ways of peace and justice and inspire us, challenge us, and compel us to work tireless, tirelessly for a community where all of your children have access to what they need to not only survive, but to thrive. Thank you for this opportunity to serve. And may our community be a better and kinder place because of our leadership. In the name of all that is holy, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the uh, reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications we read into the record? Not this time. Are there resolutions by members of council? Council member Elizabeth Brown. Thank you, President Harden. I have two resolutions tonight. I'd like to start with resolution 0317X-2018 to uh, recognize Dr. Mark Lomax II for receiving the 2018 Wexner Center Artist Residency Award. So would Dr. Mark Lomax and Mr. Jim Barrett please come to the podium as I read the resolution. Thank you so much for being here and congratulations Dr. Lomax. The Artist Residency Award is a truly prestigious achievement. Artists from around the world have received this recognition and it is notable and important to highlight that you are a Columbus native. We're very proud of that. Your music and your career have been inspired and influenced by your upbringing in Columbus, and I think it is a fitting tribute to you and your work that you have been named a resident artist at our own Wexner Center. 
What is particularly exciting is that the support you receive through this residency will allow you to finish your work, 400, an African epic, which is scheduled to be released in January. I hope this resolution and more importantly, your partnership with the Wexner Center will help more people discover your work and your positive message about using art to build community, not just in Columbus, but truly around the world. Again, congratulations on this outstanding achievement. And I'd actually first like to turn the microphone over to Jim Barrett to provide further introduction. Thank you again. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Council President Hardin, Council President Pro Temp Stinziano, Council Member Brown, members of City Council. Uh, my name is Jim Barrett, and I'm here to introduce an incredible man, a citizen of Columbus, a kid from Columbus, now a man of the world. I'm also here to uh, thank this great city. I came here a few years ago thinking I was just kind of passing through. Maybe I'd be here for a year. I never left. I can't. And it's because of the people. So an example is I was at a diner about nine months ago, walked in, sat down um, next to a total stranger, said good morning, he said good morning back. His name was Bruce. Bruce and I talk every day now. He's become one of my best friends, oddly enough. So Bruce comes to me a few months ago and he says, Jim, you've, you've got to take a look at this, this project, this, the 400 years project a friend of mine, Mark, is working on. And give me your thoughts. So I, I listened to the music, met Mark a couple times, incredible. And uh, I looked over the material, and now, quite honestly, I can't, I can't look away. I said, I need to be involved. I need to be a part of this. So Columbus, you have elevated one of your citizens. This could have been another story about starving artist, but it's not. Have a cultural leader with a compelling and timely story for this community, for this country, and for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 2018-2019 Wexner Artist Residency Award recipient, Dr. Mark Lomax. <laughs> So I want to echo Jim's sentiments and gratitude to the council. Thank you all. It's weird. I started as a professional when I was 12 and put the ensemble I'm currently going to be working with through the 400 together uh, back in 2001. It's taken this much time to have a group of people around me that really care about the work and me. So I want to thank Jim, Bruce Halliburton, um, Jason Wood, who's shooting a documentary about our work, uh, and everybody uh, who's connected to helping us take this message to the world. I also want to thank my wife, Ruth, who is here, and our daughters who found some better things to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm also excited to have our president and CEO at the Columbus Foundation, Doug Kreitler, here, uh, my former boss, Lisa Quarters, and so many other friends and Columbus residents. Um, I just want to say one thing. The project is about building community, and we're focusing on engaging college and high school students because they are not the voice of tomorrow, but the voice of today. And I think it's incumbent upon the elders of, of our global community to help them build their capacity and recognize the agency of their voice. And, you know, it comes down to this for me. If Ohio is the heart of it all, and Columbus is the heart of Ohio, why shouldn't this narrative start here, live here, and launch from here? So I'm proud as ever to be a resident of Columbus. Thank you for your support and the resolution. And you know, let's make this world better together. Thank you. Thank you so much. One, one minute, one minute, hold on. I wanna adopt the resolution officially and hand yes. it to you. So, but I also wanna um, thank you for the words that you said about young people because we have some leaders here that I'm gonna bring up for the next resolution from the City Leaders Academy. And when I was talking to the students beforehand, I said, pay attention to this resolution we're doing for Dr. Mark Lomax, because this is, this is what success looks like, and this is what giving back to your community looks like. 
um, and you know, an achievement and kind of homegrown talent and brilliance. So um, you're setting an example today, I hope, to the leaders that are going to join us at the podium next. Is there anything my colleagues would like to add? Sure. Thank you, Councilman Brown. Um, to, to Mark or Dr. Lomax, thank you for not only being a leader um, with your musical talents, but also just a leader in building community um, each and every day. And um, your work in the community is greatly appreciated. And so it really is a blessing to be able to use your love of your, of your, other, of your talent to support this community in um, two ways. And so thank you for your ongoing leadership and also your commitment to African-American males. Thank you so much. And with that, I move for adoption. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Okay, now uh, will the students here from City Leaders Academy please join us and um, Sherry Lynn Wynn, Program Director of Capital Kids Enrichment Program. This is for Resolution 0318X-2018 to recognize the 19th Annual Lights On After School Celebration on October 25th, 2018. Um, I would like to start by, I know that the students have had a busy day today here, um, and they told me that they got autographs from the mayor, which is pretty cool. Um, and they agreed that each of them would come to the microphone and say their name and their grade and their school. So you can start from any side here. My name's Jasmine. I'm in eighth grade and I go to Finland Middle. My name is Innie. I am in the eighth grade and I go to Northside Christian. My name is Faith. I'm 12 and I go to Tree of Life Christian Schools. My name is Adriana. I'm in sixth grade and I go to Afrocentric. My name is Christina Ma. I am in sixth grade and I go to Worthington Hills. My name is Salama Wee, and I'm in sixth grade, and I go to Seabird Elementary School. My name is Trey Saya. I go to Tree of Life Christian Middle School. I'm in sixth grade, and I'm 11 years old. My name is Paul. I'm, I'm in sixth grade, and I go to Northside Christian. Great. Thank you. And I told each of them that they were on TV as they did that. So that was, you were all eloquent, and thank you for participating. Um, and Ms. Wynn, uh, Program Director for Capital Kids Enrichment Program. The Lights On After School celebration was launched in 2000 as a nationwide event to celebrate after school programs and their important role in the lives of children, families, and communities. This year's celebration will be held this Thursday. It will include more than 8,000 unique events with 1 million students showcasing the skills and talents they've developed in after school programs. I'm happy to help highlight our own Capital Kids, which provides students with a safe place to learn and play once the school day is over. Capital Kids encourages strong family involvement and focuses on comprehensive supports for its participants by offering nutritious snacks, academic assistance, and enrichment activities such as cooking, field trips, art, and sports. I believe that one of the best investments we can make is in the education of our children, and after-school programs like Capital Kids are an important cornerstone of that. I hope that this resolution not only highlights the Lights On After School celebration this Thursday, but also the ongoing importance of programs and enrichment for students. Um, before I turn the microphone over to you, are there any comments or questions from my colleagues? I move for adoption. Second. Please follow up. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Ms. Wynn. Thank you very much. Council President Hardin, Council Member Pro Tim Stenziano, and Council Member Elizabeth Brown and members of Council, and also to my director, Director Collins with Recreation and Parks. As you see, there's two different programs here. I believe in doing it the best we can with one time. We have our City Leaders Middle School Leadership Academy that is here with us. So we brought them here to introduce them to you so that you can see our next wave of city leadership. They're with us for a year. 
Uh, they all have a 3.0 or above grade point average. City of Columbus residents, they have to do essays, et cetera. And our next uh, opportunity for young people, middle schoolers, six through eight, to come into the program would be in April. So just watch our city leaders page, columbus.gov backslash city leaders, or you can reach out to me, slwin at columbus.gov. Now that's for city leaders. For capital kids, I also direct the after school enrichment program at four sites within the city of Columbus. And as you know, after school programming is critical for our young people. So I am glad to see you acknowledge our lights on uh, component for our after school program. It's an advocacy day for after school. So on Thursday the 25th, most after school programs, ours included, will be having family nights, open houses, et cetera. But we wanted to come before you to make sure that you continue to know how important it is to invest in after school. There's probably 800,000 young people in the state of Ohio who need after school care that are not getting it. And a lot of it is, is due to funding. So we thank you for that. And I also have two other things. There was an opportunity where Council President Hardin and also Director Johnson spearheaded a Stuff the Backpack effort and you got backpacks to us. We were able to fill and stuff 104 backpacks and distribute them. And for your efforts, the kids have created some thank you cards for you. So there's some for you, Council President Hardin, and also for Director Johnson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Mitch Brown. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Manuel Remy. Thank you. President Pro Tem Cinziano. Uh, thank you, President Harden. I want to begin with a reminder announcement. This Thursday, October 25th, from 11 a.m. to noon at the Central Community House, I'll be hosting a roundtable discussion focused on the issue of rising property taxes uh, and the impact it's having on our residents, particularly our seniors, and their ability to stay in their neighborhoods, as well as discussing options to assist our residents that can be spearheaded by the city. I hope those in the audience or watching on TV will either join us or help promote the event as I look forward to this information presenting to not only be helpful for those in attendance, but really set a table for what potential action we could be taking in the future. Next, I would like to take this time to invite Steve Torcell, Executive Director of Homes on the Hill, and anyone from his team to the podium as I introduce Resolution 0315X-2018 to commemorate Homes on the Hill, Community Development Corporation on 25 years of service and advocating for affordable housing. Unfortunately, Councilwoman Page was ill, so she was going to present the resolution, but I'm very honored to have uh, the ability to do this since I've gotten to work with Homes on the Hill in a number of capacities. For those not familiar, Homes on the Hill is a non-for-profit organization that develops affordable housing in southwestern Franklin County. They offer a variety of programs to help individuals get into and stay in the right home while offering home buying and home ownership education programs conducted in both English and Spanish. Homes on the Hill offers rehabilitation and new homes for sale to low and moderate income families. This year, Homes on the Hill Community Development Corporation is celebrating its 25th anniversary on October 25th, 2018. So it's my honor to welcome Steve and Homes on the Hill. I'll turn the podium over to you before we finish all the rest of the uh, requirements. Thank Steve. Uh, President Harden. Council President Pro Tem Stenziano, other members of council. My pleasure to be here tonight with on my right hand is Gerilyn Barbie, who's a 12 year board member of our organization, just finished two terms as president currently, our treasurer, and completed a pretty extensive nomination committee process. And we have uh, four new board members that we're really excited about. My left hand is Daniel Ruggiero, who's kind of served two terms with Homes on the Hill. He first came to us in the early 2000s and set up our Latino Spanish outreach program, came back to us about six or seven years ago, and has managed our homeownership program since. I'd like the opportunity as I stand here, having been with Homes on the Hill for a long time, to note my appreciation for both city council 
and the city housing staff, which has been a part of our organization since the very beginning. I've had the pleasure to work with some folks who are here currently, uh, many of your predecessors and the folks who are here now. And it's always been a pleasure and an honor to represent our community and work as part of this city. One of the unique things about us is that we're a community-based organization, which means our board is comprised of people from the community who actually take uh, time and effort to help us create and manage our programs. It's a pretty unique type of operation, uh, and we're fortunate in many ways to have made it through 25 years, and we look for 25 years more. I also would say the Hilltop continues to have challenges. We look forward to continuing to work to continue to make it a better place. And I don't know if Gerald and, and or Daniel would like to say something. I did have Daniel bring what we call our deliverables, which is kind of a list of all the activities that we do. I think you'll be pretty impressed that an organization with five full-time members and three part-time members does what we do. So again, thank you for honoring us. It's really our privilege to work on behalf of the Hilltop and the City of Columbus. Would you like to say something? Thank you. I'm Geraldine Barbie, the current board treasurer and past board president. And on behalf of the board, I do want to thank the city council and the city of Columbus for being a strong advocate for Homes on the Hill and, <clears throat> excuse me, helping us to achieve our mission. So we really appreciate your support, your guidance, and all the work that, and, and all the work that we do on the west side to make the community better. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, again, want to thank you all, uh, both board members and director, uh, for your ongoing contributions to the West Side and your service to Homes on the Hill. Sure, it's been a pleasure to work with you, too. <laughs> Tell my wife that. Um, with that, I'll move for adoption. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Councilmember Tyson. Yes, thank you. I have one resolution, and it is resolution number 0324X-2018. And I'm going to ask Amy and Autumn to come to the podium, please. This resolution is to recognize October as the National Farm to School Month in the City of Columbus and to encourage Columbus residents and businesses to partner with Columbus City Schools in the month-long effort to purchase foods that are grown, raised, and processed within the state of Ohio. And whereas since 2010, the United States Congress designated October as National Farm to School Month to demonstrate the importance of farm to school programs as a way to encourage child nutrition, to stimulate local food economies, and to teach children about the origins of food. Moreover, agriculture in Ohio's number one industry is Ohio's number one industry, contributing $105 billion to the state's economy each year. And whereas in November of 2016, Columbus City Council adopted the Columbus and Franklin County Local Food Action Plan, demonstrating the city's ongoing commitment to ensuring that Columbus residents have improved access to education and health regarding healthy, affordable, and locally grown foods. And whereas the Columbus City Schools Farm to School Working Group, which included Columbus Public Health, local food system strategies coordinator have implemented changes which have led to 17 percent of columbus city schools district's 2017 food budget to be spent on local food in fact nearly three million apples were purchased from the growers in ohio uh, whereas the columbus city school food service program has become recognized a leader in the farm to school effort across ohio the farm to school effort contributes an estimated 16 million, which is invested back also in Ohio's economy. Moreover, the farm to school effort is consistent with goals A, B, and C of the local food action plan adopted by this council. Goal A seeks to enhance the coordination and communication among existing food resources and agencies. It seeks to improve access to education about healthy food, affordable food, and local food. And goal three seeks to increase the role of food in the local in, in economic development. 
And I want to now just turn the podium over to Autumn and to Amy and let them talk more about the uh, October as Farm, National Farm to School Month. Thank you, Council Member Tyson, Council President um, Hardin, Council President Pro Tem Stanziano, members of Council, thank you for recognizing Farm to School Month. Farm to School activities um, directly impact the implementation of the city and county local food action plan through increasing access to healthy food for our youngest residents, education on where our food actually comes from, and also supporting our local economy. We are grateful to all of our farm to school partners, including OSU Extension, Columbus City Schools, and countless others. OSU Extension's state farm to school team was instrumental in the success of Ohio Days, My Plate, My State, which um, was where Columbus City Schools, along with other districts throughout the county, provided one meal solely sourced or completely sourced um, from Ohio producers or processors. The OSU Extension Farm to School Partnership has brought about national recognition for the city and lo county local food action plan. At the 2018 National Farm to Cafeteria Conference, more than 40 school food service professionals from across the country were provided a tour of Columbus's local food successes, including Columbus City School's new apple processing line, which will produce more than three million Ohio apples every year here on out. Um, this work was also highlighted at this year's International Town and Gown Conference. In addition, OSU Extension supports the development of education tools, school gardens, and other resources that enrich the lives of the children in Columbus. We look forward to continuing to work with our farm to school partners to achieve a fair and sustainable food system that benefits our economy, our environment, and all people. Again, we truly appreciate Council's continued support and leadership for this work. Thank you. <laughs> Amy. Okay. Well, thank you, Autumn. And again, so now be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus, this Council is hereby recognized October as National Farm to School Month in the City of Columbus and encourage Columbus residents and businesses to partner with Columbus City Schools in the month-long effort to purchase foods that are grown, raised, and processed with the state of Ohio. And I want to say to you, Amy, thank you for being such a wonderful partner um, um, with the city and with this community um, and making sure that our our, um, all the residents have, a, our, have the opportunity to have healthy food, affordable food, and local food. And Amy is a youth wellness program coordinator at OSU Extension, and you just, it's a great partnership with the city. Thank you so very, very much. First, I need to amend, ask the to the clerk. Second. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, and, and now move for adoption. Second. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. I also just want to, um, I know Larry James was in council chambers earlier this evening, and I um, certainly want to um, thank him for the work regarding the, um, Har the Renaissance 100, Harlem Renaissance at 100, and all the arts organizations that have participated in this Renaissance project. And there are a number of exhibitions that are presently in the city of Columbus. And there is one currently that is at the Columbus Metropolitan Library Carnegie Gallery from October the 11th through October the 16th to November 16th. It's How Beautiful I Am, New Impressions of the Harlem Renaissance. There's also a fabulous exhi exhibition at the Museum of Art that was curated by Will Haygood and is I Too Sing America, the Harlem Renaissance at, one, at 100. And so I would just, um, for our viewing and listening audience, just go by and see this beautiful work. The one at the library happens to be artwork from local artists. And then the one at the museum is a curated show of um, many of the uh, 
African-American artists of the Renaissance, and it's just a fabulous exhibit. And so I know that there are Sundays when the um, museum, is, there's no charge. I would recommend going to see this fabu these fabulous exhibitions. And during the month of um, November and December and January, there will be productions, there will be exhibitions, and I would just um, share that. I think it would be just not a wonderful opportunity to go and to participate in the arts and see the great work of, of, of Harlem. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Um, I have uh, two ordinances, and as I uh, begin to read, could Ms. Paula Haynes and anyone else from Freedom Alam Cart approach the podium? And also, uh, Mrs. and Mr. Nieder, if you would uh, like to come forward. I have resolution 0316X-2018 to present Freedom a la carte with the quarterly Reese Nieder Memorial Award for Entrepreneurship and Social Change. As most folks in this room know, Reese was a staple of the Columbus community who rallied entrepreneurs to start their own small businesses. He connected startups to capital and networking with a long-term goal of creating jobs and improving our city. Reese passed away on December 14, 2016, at the age of 34, to carry on the, Reese, the legacy of Reese and to recognize entrepreneurs working towards the common good. Columbus City Council established the Reese Nieder Memorial Award for Entrepreneurship and Social Change. This award is presented quarterly to a small business or entrepreneur in Columbus working to improve neighborhoods, create jobs, and boost the quality of life for our people. This quarter's uh, Reese Nieder Memorial Award goes to Freedom a la carte. Freedom a la carte combines cuisine with life-changing employment and support to survivors in, of human trafficking. Last year, they provided supportive services to over 200 survivors of human trafficking, with 33 participating in their job training program and 14 successfully transitioning from program into sustainable employment. First, do any of my colleagues have any comments? Paula, would you uh, like to say a few words? Sure. Uh, Council President Hardin and City Council members, thank you so much for this amazing honor in recognition of the work that we're doing in the community. Um, I am privileged to have my management team with me. Um, may I introduce Susan Triampho, who is our Volunteer and Key Partners Manager, Susan Griffith, who's our Finance Manager, Jessica Levy, who is our executive chef, and Carissa Martin, our sales and marketing manager. Um, I am just so grateful for this honor and this opportunity to recognize them and the passionate and purposeful work that they do every day to transform lives. Um, I, I'm really appreciative of that recognition. I did not know Reese personally, but I have learned a lot about him in the last week. and feel like we are kindred spirits in our passion for small local business uh -huh. and um, social change. And I really appreciate this honor. Um, the, the one thing that I'll leave, leave with is his personal motto that I saw that is really representative of our team at Freedom a la carte, and that is, let's get things done, let's make it happen. Thank you so much, Ms. Paula. Mr. and Mrs. Nieder, would you like to say anything? Well, first of all, uh, thank you, President Hardin and members of City Council. You know, back in uh, early 2017, you know, this resolution was passed to uh, honor the legacy of our son, Reese. He was a champion for small business and entrepreneurs. You know, he was about development and recognition and support. He was a champion. Today, I think, the past recipients of this award, and more so today's recipient, is a champion for the uh, business they provide and for the uh, people that they take in to help with their business. So I commend them. And thank you again for the resolution and your kind hearts. Thank you for sharing Reese with us and um, instilling the values that he uh, fought so hard for. And so I also want to thank um, Alex Traxler with Griffin Hollow, uh, who had, creates our award that we uh, hand out. And uh, with that, if there are no comments, I move for pass it. Or move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted.
Next, if Asleen Rodriguez and folks from the Great Columbus Commission would please come forward. I have resolution 0321X-2018 to commemorate achievements of Asleen Rodriguez and recognize her for receiving this quarter's Great Columbus Visionary Award. Asleen Rodriguez is the co-founder and CEO of Empower Bus, which supports social mobility by providing transportation to and from employment, education, and healthcare opportunities. Asleen previously served as the Chief Operating Officer of the Women of Economic Leadership and Development, or WELD, and Co-Executive Director of After School All Stars, uh, which is a program, an after school program supporting at-risk youth. Asleen is a dedicated young leader committed to increasing opportunities for underserved and underrepresented uh, people of Columbus through transportation, education, and engagement. She is also a former recipient of the Reese Nieder uh, Memorial Award. Uh, are there any comments from my colleagues? Uh, first, I would turn, is it you, Mr. Klaus? I have Dr. Jones. So I'm <laughs> Mr. All right, Mr. Klaus. Uh, thank you, Council President Hardin, Council President Pro Tem Stinziano, and members of Council. Um, I wanted to also thank you again uh, for joining us today. The Create Columbus Commission met for our fourth annual Government Day to convene young professionals and other young professional groups to talk about their priorities, our priorities, and how we can help continue to uh, make Columbus a great place for young professionals to live, work, and play. Um, we approved a new batch of incoming Create Columbus Commissioners today. We elected our first board um, and are looking forward to taking the next steps as a nonprofit 501c3 organization. Um, we went through some programming today to talk about the state of young, young professionals in Columbus. The, we, we learned about the state budget process today and we spoke with members of city council and the mayor's office about the state of Columbus as a whole. We heard time and time again uh, the mayor's office focus on shared prosperity, and that is a focus of city council as well. And um, as Lean Rodriguez embodies a young professional leader who is taking into her own hands the same mission of shared prosperity and access to jobs and opportunity with Empower Bus. So we're proud to recognize her with our YP Visionary Award and thank council for your continued support for the Create Columbus Commission. As Lean. Thank you, President Hardin and council members. Um, when I first graduated from college, I decided to do Teach for America, and I moved to the Bronx. And as a Latina, I should have fit in really easily, but I definitely stuck out because I grew up in Northeast Ohio in a predominantly white community. We were the only diversity. Um, it was me, a half Asian kid, and an Indian kid. And, um, and it wasn't until I got to the Bronx that I really understood what my parents did for me by moving us to a suburb that had um, stellar academic um, rigor and what it did for me as a professional. And when I decided that New York wasn't gonna be my forever home, I thought about moving back to Ohio and the idea of moving back to Youngstown, Ohio wasn't a good fit for me. Uh, but moving to Columbus, Ohio was. And when I came here, I knew that I wanted to make a difference. I knew that I wanted to impact the community that I live in and around. Um, and so I held the mantle up of, of really supporting at-risk um, communities and particular youth. So I did run an after-school program for four years. And afterwards, I had this itch to be an entrepreneur. And I don't think that there's a better city in, in the United States, in my opinion, that really does a great job of letting you explore, especially as someone who doesn't always see their face as entrepreneurs. I have felt supported here. I have felt encouraged. I have felt that I can build my dream here. And I think about uh, the past, uh, in particular when you're talking about transportation. In 1955, transportation was the largest topic in the United States. Why? Because the bus boycott was happening. There was a camp of people who cared about social justice, and there was a camp of people who cared about the dollars and cents, and they didn't always match, and they didn't always cross over, but they ended up letting you sit wherever you want on a bus. And in Columbus, sometimes that doesn't matter where you can sit, because we're the second most economically segregated city in the United States. Uh -huh. And so we're watching people who live downtown have to make it to Etna, Ohio, and New Albany, and West Jeff, 
for $14, $15 an hour jobs. Who might be taking public transportation that might take them an hour and 49 minutes, three bus transfers? That's one way. So when we thought about uh, Empower Bus, we thought about what does it look like to expedite and give dignified transportation in a different way, uh, what's considered microtransit, but also what happens when we give education on the bus? What if we have somebody teaching? What if we think about technology? And so the reason I say this is because I do feel that I have a vision that I can explore here in Columbus to impact not just the sum, but the all. And I am excited for the continued opportunity to do that in this great city. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Um, seeing no further uh, oh yes, Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, thank you, President Harden, and certainly thank you. I certainly appreciate your the words that you just stated um, to this body, but to our viewing and listening audience, and that you have to just continue to have that vision and, and have that hope and have that energy to be able to make sure that individuals in our community all get it back, get the chance to be able to move forward. And so I appreciate your passion and your commitment to ensuring equity for all. So I thank you for that. I also, I, I never knew that you taught for Teach for America. And so thank you for, um, after you left college, you decided to commit to helping young people to get what is so important for them to all move forward is to make sure they get the skills to get a good education. Because education has always been the way for people to move out, to be able to move out of poverty and to move forward. So I thank you for the work that you did as a younger woman. And I certainly appreciate the work that you're doing currently as a young leader. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Congratulations. I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. Congratulations. Are there any comments by our elected officials, attorney, auditor's office, treasurer? I see. Uh, we have members of Hilltop representative. It's good to see you, sir. Um, are there any uh, requests by members of council for the removal of ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stanziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Uh, will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? Finance Committee, ordinances 2797, 2799 2018. Education Committee, ordinance 2827 2018. Public Service and Transportation Committee, ordinances 2342, 2681, and 2747 2018. Economic Development and Small Business Committee, ordinances 2860 and 2876 2018. Technology Committee, Ordinances 2672 and 2854-2018. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 2567, 2668, 2732, 2733, 2740, 2757, 2768, and 2773 2018. Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 2869 2018. The following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read those ordinance numbers into the record, please? Resolutions of Expression 314X, 319, 320, 322, 313X-2018. Finance Committee, Ordinances 2775, 2796, 2801, 2018. Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinances 2362 and 2463, 2018. Public Safety Committee, Ordinances 2574 and 2779, 2018. Housing Committee, Ordinance, ordinances 2697, 2698, 2699, 2715, 2785, 2855, 2856, and 2857 2018. Public Utilities Committee, ordinances 2703, 2704, 2734, and 2748 2018. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I also uh, failed to recognize Ms. Pegg from Southland. I apologize. I didn't see you. 
Um, we have one speaker on the consent agenda, Mr. Nate Wilkins. Uh, and Mr. Wilkins is speaking on Ordinance 2715. Mr. Wilkins, welcome back to Council. Nathaniel George Wilkins, 1612 Arlington Avenue, Chairman, solely vacant in the Baton Poverty, North Linden area. 27 15 2018. I'm speaking in against of it. I need to know how long this property has sit vacant. What will this property be used for? 1282 22nd Avenue. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would the uh, director, would you please follow up with Mr. Wilkins on this specific uh, piece of uh, this, this uh, property? Are there any additional questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, may the clerk please call the roll. Oh, may I get a, a motion to approve uh, the consent action carry agenda? Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. We will now move to uh, proceed with the second reading of 30 day table and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the. Um, Finance Committee. Uh, council, member, our council Member Brown is the chair. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Tonight in Finance, we have Ordinance 2776-2018 to adopt the 2019 Action Plan Budget, which implements the fourth year of the five-year consolidated plan for the Community Development Block Grant, Home Investment Partnerships, Emergency Solutions Grant, and Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS programs to authorize the filing of the plan application with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and to declare an emergency. The federal HUD grants that make up the Consolidated Action Plan budget represent important investments in Columbus neighborhoods. I'm hosting a Finance Committee hearing in Council Chambers tomorrow, October 23rd at 4 o'clock p.m. to go over these grants in greater detail. An important component of tomorrow's hearing will be receiving public input on how these dollars can make the greatest positive impact so I encourage anyone interested to please provide comment. Speaker slips must be filled out at City Hall before or during the hearing or comments can be submitted via email. We are tabling the ordinance tonight so that it can be considered further at tomorrow's hearing. I request to table uh, indefinitely pending public hearing. Second. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance is tabled. Thank you. May I move to Recreation and Parks? Please. Tonight we have Ordinance 2569-2018 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into a guaranteed maximum reimbursement agreement pursuant to Section 186 of the City Charter with the Franklin County Historical Society doing business as COSI for the renovation of the COSI facility and surrounding grounds to authorize the expenditure of $1.5 million from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund and to declare an emergency. The City of Columbus is a close partner with COSI through ownership of the building they occupy and the operation of Genoa Park and Dorian Green to either side of the building. That partnership will continue through the capital funding being authorized in this ordinance for renovations, including replacing the building's roof and other improvements to the surrounding property. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance passed. And finally, in Recreation and Parks, we have Ordinance 2808-2018 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with Franklin Park Conservatory for administration and implementation of the Franklin Park Master Plan in the amount of $1,500,000 to authorize the expenditure of $1,500,000 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance represents capital support for the conservatory's children's garden and expanded outdoor visitor experience, which opened to the public earlier this year. Uh, the conservatory uh, worked with the city to increase access to their learning and visitor experiences through offering free admission on the first Sunday of the month, uh, reduced price memberships for eligible residents, and partnering with local schools and churches to facilitate field trip experiences for students. Are there any comments or questions from my colleagues? Seeing none. Oh, yes. Yes. 
Chair, I would just like to, to add, so thank you for your leadership and all those folks who've worked with the um, conservatory over the last several months on this. So they really have stepped up. Uh, another or, um, program that they initiated was a uh, checkout program for cards at the uh, local library. So if you don't have a, 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 a registration, uh, you can go to the library and check out a membership. And so I encourage folks to take advantage of that. And so it's those type of partnerships um, that really shows uh, the value of, uh, of the conservatory and other arts organizations in our community. So thank you for your leadership. Absolutely. Thank you for the reminder, President Hardin. I believe the, the um, uh, membership checkouts are available in the libraries in the vicinity of the, um, of the conservatory. So people should take advantage of that. Thank you. Any other questions? I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. That is all I have in my committees, President Hardin. Thank you, Chair Brown. The next committee to come before council is the Public Safety Committee. Councilmember Mitch Brown chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Uh, tonight we have Ordinance 2603-2018 to authorize and direct the mayor of the city of Columbus to accept a grant award through the fiscal year 17 assistance to firefighters grant AFG program via the Department of Homeland Security Federal Emergency Management Agency to authorize an appropriation of $288,858 from the unappropriated balance of the general government grant fund to the Division of Fire to cover 95 percent of the cost associated with the purchase of NOx boxes, smoke detectors, and carbon monoxide detectors, as well as some educational materials and pamphlets. To authorize the transfer of $14,442 from the general fund to cover the 5% cost match to be made by the city, to authorize the expenditure of $303,000 from the general government grant fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, in the chair this evening is Director Collins. Would you please make some comments regarding this grant, please? Thank you, President Hardin, Safety Chair Brown, the rest of the commissioners. Um, yes, thank you very much for this. This is an ongoing grant that this uh, Division of Fire has received over several years, and this supports the uh, robust fire prevention initiatives that they have going. Um, they often go into neighborhoods and, upon request, will install fire detectors. They check for batteries to make sure that they're not expired. Um, they also um, more recently have provided Knox Box, which for the elderly gives um, family members a peace of mind that if someone is inside that there is a way that they can gain entry without having to break the door down um, like they used to have to do, causing damage to the, to the structure. So these Knox, box, Knox Boxes will be put in senior citizens' homes to allow fire to gain entry with the key um, more expeditiously, mm -hmm. sometimes in, in life-saving types of um, situations where time counts. So thank you very much. Thank you, and again, for all of our listening audience to be aware that uh, friends and family and relatives who already have the knock boxes as described by uh, Director Collins and the smoke detectors, please take advantage of the opportunity through our fire division. Mm -hmm. uh, the Fire Prevention Bureau will be more than happy to come out and explain the program and offer up whatever services they have available. That's all I have this evening, sir. I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Chair Brown. The next committee to come before Council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Remy. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Council President Hardin. Tonight I have ordinance number 2867 2018 to authorize Columbus City Council to enter into a grant agreement with community partners in support of the Purple Isle Transportation Innovation Lab to authorize an appropriation and an expenditure within the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund and to declare an emergency. I'm very excited to ex partner with Council President Hardin and Council President Pro Tem Stinziano in supporting this legislation. Not only does it contribute to the discussion of innovative transportation and equitable mobility, it also empowers our young leaders by giving them a seat at the table to discuss a subject that is extremely important to us all. I'd like to turn the floor over to Council President Hardin so that he may share a few words about the Innovation Lab. Thank you, Chair Remy, uh, for sponsoring this legislation with uh, President Pro Tem and myself. The Purple Isle is a bipartisan nonprofit uh, that organizes and facilitates innovation labs around the country. Innovation labs are team-based problem-solving ex exercises. It's like a hackathon for problem-solving, 
uh, for facing our community. Faced with a challenging topic, teams uh, must develop a policy, community program, and a civic tech solution. The weekend of November 16th at the Idea Foundry, the Purple Owls facilitating an innovation lab focused on transportation, equitable mobility, and how to build a culture of public transit ridership. Participants will be organized into teams, receive a research dossier, and engage in a weekend team-based problem solving, uh, which culminates in a pitch competition. Previous labs have focused on immigration and workforce, gentrification and affordable housing, as well as criminal justice. If you want to learn more and get involved, you can look up Thrive Columbus Transportation Innovation Weekend uh, to so you can uh, participate. Thank you once again uh, to my colleagues for their partnership on this ordinance, uh, and I'll turn it back over to Council Member. Any other questions and comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you very much, Council President Hardin. That's all I have this evening in public safety and trans or service and transportation. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Remy. The next committee to come before Council is the Public Utilities Committee. That committee is chaired by President Pro Tem Stinziano. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, President Hardin. Tonight in Public Utilities, bring forward an Ordinance 2626-2018 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter into a construction contract with BLD Services, LLC for the downspout redirection, Clintonville 1, Overbrook, Chatham Project, and the light little in the lateral lining, Clintonville 1 Overbrook Chatham Project to authorize the appropriation and transfer of $2,261,588.73 from the Sanitary Sewer Reserve Fund to the Ohio Water Development Loan Fund to authorize the transfer within and the expenditure of up to $714,472.95 Sanitary Sewer General Obligation Bond Fund for a total expenditure of $2,976,000. $976.61.68 and to amend the 2018 capital improvements budget. The project is needed to mitigate water and basement and sanitary sewer overflows in the Clintonville planning area as part of our project blueprint. The work of these projects consists of redirecting downspouts from homes to discharge in the street and lining approximately 311 sanitary, sewer, sewer, hmm. sanitary service laterals. A lot of pun. Tough words today. Public meetings were conducted to solicit public input regarding the project and descriptions of the work associated with this project were included on the City of Columbus website. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. That's all we have in public utilities. Thank you, President Pro Tem or Chair uh, Stinziano. <laughs> the next committee to come before council is the Health and Human Service Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Tyson. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, I have resolu no, ordinance number 1822-2018 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to accept a grant from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to supplement the Safe Point program in the amount of $100,000 to authorize the appropriation of $100,000 in the Health Department's Grants Fund and to do declare an emergency. I'm going to ask Peggy Anderson, Chief Operating Officer of Equitas Health, to come to the microphone and certainly um, provide some additional information regarding the, this ordinance. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, President Hardin, uh, Pre Council President Pro Tem Cinziano, uh, and all members of Council. Thank you, um, Council Member Tyson. Um, again, I'm Peggy Anderson from Equitas Health, representing the Safe Point program. Uh, I want to thank many of you. You've come to um, participate in tours of our program over the last couple of years now. Uh, it's a pretty remarkable program, and to see how many folks come in and have need of our service is sometimes overwhelming. And so we appreciate uh, the the dollars, um, both from the city and the council. In, in, the, in the county to ensure this program continues. Um, our our pr program, Safe Point, is a harm reduction program. Harm reduction basically means we don't, we don't give up on folks. Um, we all wish that folks could stop using uh, drugs, can, could live healthier and happier lives. We know that sometimes that takes a while, and sometimes it doesn't happen at all. But we want to be there for the folks who may take a little longer, who may need other resources that to make their quality of life a little better. So I just wanted to give a short update on our program. For the first two quarters of 2018, we've served 1,500 uh, unduplicated individuals. Uh, through this program. We've had uh, over 750 of those. We've provided risk reduction counseling sessions with them. So we are trying to get folks to actively think about reducing their risk. 
We've provided um, th over 300 instances of uh, folks talking with a counselor, a chemical de dependency or substance use counselor. So not just a, a kind of a cold referral. These are actually folks who are connecting with the counselor and, and having those conversations. We've also dispensed over 970 doses, and again, just the first two quarters of 2018, um, over 970 doses of naloxone and Narcan. So for folks who um, need to stop their overdoses, stop the overdoses of their friends and families, we've been a piece of that. We've also provided over 150 pack, emergency packs, and what that is, for our individuals on certain, on, depending on the day, we cap the number of folks who can come in our doors because it, it's too overwhelming. So we have folks, um, I think the most we ever served in one night was 110, and so we had to start capping. So for folks who come in after that cap, and on, on one night it's 60 and on another it's 75, for those who um, are already active members, we're able to give them a supply of 10 syringes and, and supplies to get them through to the next time. So that they're not, uh, we've had folks leaving in tears, we've had folks angry because they couldn't get their supplies and they, they were trying to do something better. So we were trying to do that. We also gave out in those two quarters over 5,000 Sharps containers. So we want to be part of the solution of making sure that syringes can not be on the streets as much as possible. Um, I also wanted to give an update. As of um, October 1, we turned into an exchange program, and so we gave our participants a month's notice and have been working with them on how to bring their syringes back into us so that we can then know that we're properly disposing of those. So that program actually has, has changed. Uh, it's going very well. Our participants actually have um, made that change a little easier than we anticipated. So that's, that's all positive. I also wanted to share um, just a little update. We currently work out of our Short North Clinic. Um, it's too overwhelming. No other services can really happen when this program's going on. So I am very happy and I'm hoping in the next uh, uh, few days we have a lease signed um, for a new space uh, for us in Franklinton. We, the, the um, Franklinton Area Commission is, on, is supportive. We've met with them, talked with them, given them um, our uh, plans for the space, and the landlord is on board, so we're just finalizing some of the lease arrangements. What that means for us is that A, we'll be on the west side regularly, but B, we'll be able to do four to five days a week at that location versus the two days that we are currently able to provide. So we increase the services. Hopefully then the caps won't be important um, because uh, there will be more days for folks to stop by and more hours that are good for them. Uh, so I just wanted to end um, with an email that we got just this morning from one of our counselors who works with Safe Point. It's always good to tell stories. This is from one of our participants. She says, about four months ago, we met at Equitas in Short North at the end of the Safe Point event, and you said that when I'm ready, you'd be able to point me in the direction of great resources for rehab and or recovery. I'm ready. I've hit as many lows as I can, I think, and I'd like to start rehab as early as tonight or tomorrow. This is one of the reasons we continue to do these programs, because when people are ready, they need folks like us and the, the supporters and the resources that we have to get them into care as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. And will you still be at the two locations? or would we're, we're, we're going to try to actually move all of it to the Franklinton okay. location. Um, we are open to providing services at other folks. That's why I say four to five days, because if there's a fifth day that someone wants us to come to their location on a, in a different part of town, we're happy to do that. Um, but fr uh, Franklinton is where the majority of our, uh, more so than the short north, that's where the majority of our folks are living. Um, but we'd love to find someone who would want us to come in on the south side um, and maybe on the east side. But that's been a challenge. And can you um, state the hours that you're available? Yeah, currently, until we move into our new location, um, we are open Tuesdays from 5.30 to 7.30, and then Saturdays 8.30 to around 12.30. Uh, those are the active hours of the exchange. Um, we don't have hours picked yet for when we move to Franklinton because we want to ask the community members what works best for those, but we hope to have some morning, some evening, and some afternoon hours to be able to accommodate everyone. Thank you. Well, certainly thank you for your leadership and your partnership. I know that Nancy Bechtel is in the chair tonight from Columbus Public Health and certainly has been working closely um, with your organization, uh, as well as I'm sure um, Dr. Roberts. So I thank you for that leadership. And again, I appreciate the work of the uh, Franklin County Commissioners providing these dollars to support this work. And thank you for coming in and giving us an update on the number of individuals that are coming there. Certainly we wish that we didn't have as many people coming, but, but 
again, this is a situation that's not only here but across the country, and I'm very appreciative to have an organization that is um, supporting um, individuals moving forward, moving more forward, hopefully out of their addiction through the work that you are doing. And thanks for sharing that letter today. Thank it you. does mean a lot because it does take time for some people to get to the place where they want to get those services. So thank you for your leadership. Are there any questions or comments? Council President Hardin. Thank you, Chair. Um, just want to ask a question. You mentioned that uh, October 1st, you did the switch over from drop off to exchange. And I know there has been philosophical debate about the difference between the two. You said that, the, that it has gone well so far. Just wondering, are we going to, uh, how are we going to track how well that has, the transition has happened? And will you come back to uh, both the county and the city as funders to let us know uh, about that transition because we don't want to lose anybody um, through the cracks as we, we make that change. Absolutely. We've been working with the city health department to be very, uh, to, to kind of collect those stories where we, someone couldn't get in or they show up without any syringes that to, to exchange. And we've been working for, um, to make sure we have some plans for those emergency situations uh, so that we okay. we don't just turn them away okay. that again even if it's just 10 to get you to through to the next time right. we want to be able to do that so we actually the, the city health department uh, the whole team has been really good at us trying to think through what those situations may be so that we don't let folks fall through the cracks but we will be collecting that and are happy to report back to the city and the county about those that data thank you so much thank you chair tyson for your leadership Thank you. And the, and the last comment, Peggy, I'll make because I know from the maybe the viewing listing audience sometimes question the why are we having the um, exchanges and providing these needles. However, I think there's a point that I did not make is that we don't want to continue the spread of HIV mm -hmm. of, of Hep C in our community as well as HIV. But Hep C is something that I know that we are dealing with in this community, mm -hmm. and an exchange program like this begins to prevent that. Um, for that disease and other diseases going from one person to another. So um, that's such an important point. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And if there are no more questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance passed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Tyson. Uh, the next committee is the Rules and Reference Committee. And I am going to read a couple ordinances uh, for uh, Chair Page or Councilmember Page. Uh, the first ordinance 2647-2018 to amend section 4127.01 of the Columbus Building Code by replacing appendix, appendix G pools of the 2003 Residential Code with the Residential Swimming Pool section of the current adopted Building Code and to repeal section 4127.03 of the Columbus Building Code. I'd like to ask uh, Director Messer, uh, Director of Building and Zoning Services, to explain uh, this ordinance, please. Sure. Uh, <laughs> thank you, President Hardin, other members of council. Um, currently, cities in Ohio um, adopt individual standards in order to regulate residential swimming pools in the various communities. Um, they regulate things such as fencing, door alarms, gates, et cetera. Uh, historically, the cities used an international code standard uh, dated from 2003, but that code has uh, become outdated. It's difficult for customers to access and therefore understand all the requirements. So the state has an updated uh, code section that it's much clearer and easier to access and understand. Therefore, this legislation is merely clarifying that the city would like to use the Ohio Building Code section for residential swimming pools instead of the international code. No requirements would be changing. It, um, all the requirements stay the same. It's just a different code section that we're using. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance is passed. The next ordinance is 2781-2018 to amend sections 4565.02 and 4565.06 and 4565.07 of the Columbus City Codes as enacted by Ordinance 2184-2018 and amend ordinances 2185-2018, 2196 2196-2018, and 2192-2018 relating to post-1994 community reinvestment areas in order to make administrative corrections and to declare an emergency. Director Shawnee, would you like to speak on this ordinance, please? 
Thank you, President Hardin, members of council. Uh, put quite simply, with a series of pieces of legislation this large, occasionally you miss a couple of things. Um, we had a couple of references that were misplaced. We, as we got into it and working with some of our clients, we found that some of the definitions related to uh, mid-rise projects and some of our um, dates in terms of transitions were less clear than we thought. Uh, so we're simply going in and making a few technical corrections. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions or comments from colleagues? Seeing none, a move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance passed. And finally, I'd like to introduce a ordinance from the floor. It's Ordinance 2977-2018 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into a contract with Strategic Partners, LLC, in support of public service announcements for the 2018 general election and to authorize the transfer of $280,000 between the departments within the general fund and to authorize the expenditure of $280,000 from the general fund to waive competitive bid, uh, bidding provisions of Columbus City Code, Section 329, and to declare an emergency. For 12 years, the Franklin County Board of Elections funded nonpartisan uh, voter education. In some years, this was in excess of $500,000. In 2018, the Board of Elections staff again put forth a plan to fulfill that mission. The Board of Elections plan was tactically similar each year since 2006, but this year was blocked by uh, members of the board. When our three Franklin County commissioners offered to pay for the traditional task, the commissioners were advised that as a statutory political subdivision, they lacked the express authority to make this expenditure directly. This advice has confused some, of, uh, some as members of the county commission, prosecutor and auditor have voted or otherwise allowed this nonpartisan education in the past. The city of Columbus has the ability to fund nonpartisan voter education. This ability is ex explicitly and expressly stated in code section 2321.55 to conduct activities intended to promote, enforce and protect the fundamental right to vote. And the City of Columbus has participated in nonpartisan voter education in the past, including in campaigns to support the 2014 Charter Review, the 2009 income tax discussion, and past capital bond packages. In a time when voter suppression is top of mind in many voters across the country, it is unsettling uh, that uh, we are not able to come together to educate our voters. I think that I speak for this entire council when I say that we should be empowering voters, not suppressing them. At this time, I'd like to ask the director of the Board of Elections, Mr. Ed Leonard, to come uh, approach the podium. Director, thank you for being here this evening um, and speaking to this ordinance. Again, Council President Hardin, uh, uh, Pro Tem Stinziano, and members of council, as you said, I'm, my name's Ed Leonard. I'm the director of the Board of Elections, and as you I appreciated your uh, recitation of the, the circumstances that have brought me here today, um, and so because there's a tie vote, obviously I'm not speaking representing the Board of Elections, Certainly. but I am accepting the invitation from council to speak a little bit about the background and some context of our past advertising programs and what we had contemplated for this election cycle. And, the, and also the value of uh, early voting uh, that it has in Franklin County. Um, the concept of early voting began, and, and open absentee began in 2006 uh, when the legislature changed the law. And in every even numbered election year since 2006, uh, the Franklin County Board of Elections has voted unanimously to advertise about early voting and other election related information. There have been years when the information was about voter ID information that was going to be required when those new requirements were put into place. But again, the practice has been to educate voters and that has been done uh, in a bipartisan fashion, uh, again, every federal election cycle since 2006. Um, and actually, in 2018, the appropriation that wasn't spent was actually lower than amounts that have been spent in the past. Hmm. Uh, we've uh, spent uh, 325,000 in 2016. Um, in 2012, that was figure was almost 400,000, 392,000. Um, and actually, uh, in 2016, the those who voted by mail or in person at the early vote center equaled over 225,000 uh, voters, or almost 38% of all voters casting their ballots in that general election. 
in 2012. That number of voters uh, voting early, uh, either by mail or in person, uh, equaled 40 percent of all the Franklin County voters casting ballots in that year, general election. And in both of those years, 2016 and 2012, the Board of Elections spent a substantial amount of money in advertising early vote. Uh, the benefits of more people voting early by mail or in person is that voters don't have to then show up on election day. Uh, the more people voting early means that there are fewer lines, fewer voters in line on election day, which then helps make things smoother. The fewer voters in line on election day means things run smoother. It's easier for those who do show up at the polls. Um, and I would think that all voters, regardless of party, would prefer the shorter lines um, at the polls and a smoother election day. And I'll have to make a point is that our, one of your council members, a former director of the Franklin County Board of Elections, is very well versed in some of the issues that face in terms of um, the purpose of advertising early voting and, and the value of early, early voting. Um, in 2018, now, Franklin County has over, now as of the most recent election registration deadline, has over 881,000 registered voters. It's a record for Franklin County. And just since the last registration deadline in July, uh, before that special election in August, uh, since that time we've had over 30,000 new registered voters. Uh, Franklin County has a growing population of new Americans. We have a growing population of newly young registered voters. And uh, again, those record number of registrations heightened, reflects a heightened interest in the upcoming election. And once again, the more people who vote early, uh, in person or by mail, the smoother election day is going to be at the polls. So there's clearly a benefit to having as many people as possible vote early uh, and in person. And those who vote early uh, by showing up at the polls, uh, to those who, um, who vote early, to those who show up at the polls, uh, that question that you have is the same question that the Board of Elections had in value, uh, weighing the value of advertising, the details of early voting uh, versus whether voters are really aware of uh, the details of early voting. And providing those details allow um, allow folks to, to take advantage of it because we have a lot of folks who, who take advantage of early vote because they can't always take off on election day. Mm -hmm. They can't take the time away or life gets in the way on election day. And so by voting early, they ensure that they're uh, making sure that they cast that ballot uh, so that they, if they can't get off work on election day, they're still able to exercise that right. And if they are voting early, it again helps us in the smoother conduct of our election. So again, some of those, uh, these are many of the same uh, uh, issues or uh, points that were made at our board meeting. So what I'm recommending to you or, or what I'm saying to you today is no different than what was recommended and what was discussed by our board at the most recent meeting. So Thank you so much, Director, uh, for the work you're doing and, uh, to prepare us for election day or, or that we're actually voting now. Uh, yes, for the work that, that you're doing to make sure that folks are able to vote. I saw Councilmember Mitch Brown had a question. Thank you, President Harden. Again, uh, I'm an advocate, of course, for early voting. Mr. Leonard, would you take a moment just to reassure everyone who is well voting with regards to the issue of voter fraud? Well, again, we, we have many of the safeguards in, that we need to have in place that we do all the auditing in advance when we're preparing the machines to be sent out to, the, uh, to all the various precinct locations throughout the county. We conduct audits, we conduct tests of our systems to ensure that the systems are operating correctly, they are tabulating correctly. Uh, and so again, we're, we're confident that, that uh, again, we've made it easy for people to cast their vote and we've made it hard for people not to, to cheat the process. So again, I'm very confident that we're uh, secure in the, for the upcoming election. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember, uh, uh, Councilmember Tyson. Thank you. Thank you, um, yeah, Mr. Leonard, for coming to council tonight and certainly um, giving us the, the data that you just provided us with. And so, you know, it is voting, you know, voting matters, and it does. It matters. The right to vote is perhaps the most important privilege you have as a citizen and a representative democracy and we are a democracy. And elections give citizens the opportunity to choose their leaders, mm -hmm. decide important issues, and to shape their government. 
And so clearly, we want to make sure that everyone ha knows when to vote, what day to vote, and know that they're and where they can vote, and to be voting, um, you know, if they do early vote, vote on election day, but it shapes our democracy, and, it, and, er and it's from the bottom up. And so it is so important that we make sure that every individual that lives in our city and our county had that opportunity to be able to get the information to know to come out to where to vote and how to vote. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. President Pro Tem. Thank you, Council President. First, Director, I want to thank you and all the employees at the Board of Elections. I know it's a very busy time uh, with a lot of excitement and planning going on uh, for Election Day. Uh, but to my colleagues, you know, I as mentioned, as a former director, saw firsthand how important the voter education was. It's just not enough to tell people, you can vote on election day, uh, here's where you go. Uh, the education that is required to make sure people have the information they need in terms of uh, identification, uh, polling locations, or the very useful options that I and others advocated when I was even at the State House after being a director of the Board of Elections to make sure that they know they have opportunities to vote in person uh, at an early vote center or vote by mail. Uh, unfortunately, it seems we've gone in a partisan route. Uh, was fortunate in my time that it wasn't partisan when we were talking about voter education, uh, but really know, uh, as the director eloquently said, that we do have a number of voters out there, or registered voters, uh, that additional information is immensely helpful uh, to them. We would get phone calls all the way up to the last half hour before the polls would close, and always being able to point them to that information or making sure those answers are an opportunity to be addressed ahead of time uh, was always helpful. So thank you again to you and the employees. Also want to make a plug, since the director's here, we always need poll workers at the Franklin County Board of Elections. Uh, that advertising campaign is going on very notes, well so we uh, with the dispatch, but if anyone wants to really do a wonderful civic duty, serving the polls is also uh, immensely important this time of year. Thank Especially you, young people at Youth at the Booth. Exactly. We have young people at Youth at the Booth. Again, as long as you're registered, that's one of the most uh, rewarding moments that I see each, each, every couple of months now that we actually host the naturalization ceremonies at the Board of Elections, those new citizens, uh, again, and trying to make sure that they have that information about all the things that they can do, including serving at the polls. So I'll put the number out, 614-525-5393. So that, again, it is, uh, uh, Councilman Cinciano always reminds me, don't forget to mention, it's a paying job. It's not a volunteer gig. So again, we want to encourage folks to participate because it is the front lines of democracy to help us carry out those, uh, those elections uh, as best we can. So. Thank you so much, Director. Thank you. Uh, seeing no more questions or comments, first I move to amend and submit it to the clerk. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance is passed. That is the last uh, bit of business to come before council. With that, may I get a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Uh, meeting is adjourned. We will, we will go straight into uh, uh, zoning after a few uh, a break, and then we'll take knowledge into speakers after zoning. Sorry, thank you. Regular meeting number 56 will now come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Is there a second? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee. All members serve on it. Councilmember, floor is yours. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to the speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents, three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side, and we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you.
The first ordinance is 2749-2018 to grant a variance in the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permitted uses of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 465 Southwood Avenue to conform an existing single unit dwelling in the C4 commercial district. The applicant is Corey Michael Reeb. The proposed use is a single unit dwelling and the city department's recommendation is approval. The Columbus Southside Air Commission's recommendation is approval 13 to zero. And if there are no questions or comments, seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2769-2018 to grant a variance in the provisions of sections 3332.02R Rural District, 3332.06 Rural Area District Requirements, and 3332.19 Fronting. The Columbus City Code to the property located at 548 Roll Road to allow an air quality facility with reduced development standards in the R Rural District. The applicant is the City of Columbus Department of Public Utilities Division of Sewage and Drainage, care of Jeremy Cawley. The proposed use is an air quality facility for the purpose of Lockbourne Intermodal Subtrunk Sewer. The City Department's recommendation is approval and the Far South Area Commission's recommendation is 10 to zero. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues. I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2786-2018 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.039 R4 residential district use, 3332.05 area district lot width requirements, 3332.15 R4 area res district requirements, 3332.19 fronting, and 3332.27 rear yard of the city, city of Columbus codes for the property located at 109 East Warren Street to permit a single unit dwelling, a carriage house, on the rear of the lot developed with a single unit dwelling with reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Michael Mahaney. The proposed use is a carriage house on a lot developed with a single unit dwelling. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Italian Vill village commissioner's recommendation is approval. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2830-2018 to rezone 2388 Ruck B Street being 15.48 acres located at the terminus of East Eastland Com Commerce Center Drive, 940 feet south of Groves Road from AR1 Apartment Residential District, M2 Manufacturing and LM Limited Manufacturing District to M2 Manufacturing District. District. The applicant is Marshall Acquisitions LLC, care of attorney Donald Plank. The proposed use is, a man is manufacturing uses and storage of trunks and trailers. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Greater Far South Air Commission's recommendation is approval nine to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The final ordinance this evening is 2835-2018 to grant a variance from the, city, from the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permitted uses of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 259 East Livingston Avenue to permit first floor residential uses in the C4 commercial district. The applicant is Donald T. Plank. The proposed use is 12 dwelling units. The city department's recommendation is approval and the German Village Commission's recommendation is approval five to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. That's all I have in my committee this evening. Thank you, Chair Tyson. I see no further business to come for the zoning committee. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Please call a roll. Brown, Brown, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass.
are adjourned. Sorry. <laughs> we'll take uh, non-agenda speakers momentarily.